BCTV's Roland Boyden here. Welcome to a special midday report for 545 Live, BCTV's weekly media roundup hosted at week's end. Summing up a week's worth of headline news and the like for those of you catching this live in the daytime at uh, now 10.54 a.m. on this special uh, broadcast. We're going to take you live to the River Garden where in a matter of minutes, the strolling of the heifers will officially take the reins on that downtown structure. We'll find out what they're going to do with the building, how they're going to keep it open, pay for it, and all those other details in a moment. For those of you catching this at our regularly scheduled 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time Comcast Channel 8 broadcast slot, we'll do a full 5.45 live report here. We'll get you the highlights from that press conference and some up a whole lot more in this show, including all the latest details on a pedestrian auto accident in Brattleboro. We'll get news from our demolition desk, which includes the teardown at the Hinsdale Greyhound Park, more construction footage from the I-91 bridge and Brooks House project, and of course all those details on what will happen next at the River Garden, plus plenty more including sports from Landmark College and weather from Brattleboro Union High School's morning news advisory program, BUHS TV. It's all set to kick off. We're going to jam pack it into 15 minutes, so stick with us right here on 545 Live. to take this opportunity to remember those gallant individuals who fought and died for our country, yet it is in remembering our fallen comrades that we are reminded of those whose fate is still unknown, those still listed as missing in action and prisoners of war. Welcome back to this November 15th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news. I'm we'll launch you down to the River Garden in a moment for this special midday report. But first, that's footage from this week's Veterans Day celebration from the Chesterfield Arc Bridge Beautification and Preservation Society held this Monday on the bridge of that same name, one that once connected Vermont Route 9 to New Hampshire Route 9. Which is now sitting dormant alongside its 2008 replacement bridge, though still spanning the Connecticut River, which is where longtime BCTV producer Karen Reardon set up shop with a camera in tow this week to gather footage of this year's Veterans Day celebrations on the bridge. Now, uh, before we head on here in uh, the news for uh, the local stratosphere, I want to talk national news for a moment. Uh, it's hard to talk about anything in the national news media cycle without talking about uh, Typhoon Yolanda. For that, we'll go back into the close-up here, set it up, and then we'll bring in uh, our stories. Now, uh, a headline-heavy week for the Brattleboro region uh, at the moment, but uh, first we'll start with the global headlines, where the Category 5 equivalent Super Typhoon Yolanda that struck the Philippines last weekend continues to dominate the national media cycle, with the estimated death toll rising well above 4,000. With the images of terror and tragedy continuing, as tens of thousands of survivors remain in chaos, cut off from housing, food, and other critical social services. These are images that can be hard to watch for any of us observing from across the ocean, something that can make grieving a, a little confusing for residents without a personal connection to the tragedy, just trying to sort out how to feel. For more on that topic, we're joined by 545 Live Current Affairs Analyst Robert Stack, who also happens to be a longtime licensed mental health counselor. He's here to talk a little bit more about what he has dubbed good grief, or constructive ways of experiencing our feelings of human empathy during a global crisis. Robert, thanks for joining us here. Let's put you up on the split screen for a moment, and then we can uh, break down uh, the latest news coming out of the Philippines here. So uh, it's, it's all over the, uh, the national media. We're seeing just some horrific images it's hard not to connect on a very personal level, even for those of us that have no uh, direct tie to the Philippines. How do you cope with this? How do you move on, especially when you're continuing to be ber berated with a barrage of images, we'll say? I was captivated by watching oh. the towers go down. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I watched it. Yeah. And I would watch it, and I would watch it, I'd watch the plane, and it just... You know, and I used to do a grief group, and we talked about this, and, uh, and there's a term called vicarious traumatization. Right. I mean, you know, and I, I don't pay too much attention to that, but on some level, I mean, I think for, especially with children, I, I think you'd want to be careful about overexposure. 
You can catch Robert Stack on his own program, Let's Talk About Mental Health, where he's joined uh, each week by local psychiatrist Nels Kloster for a debate on uh, issues relating to mental health, addiction, and recovery. It's live Monday, 6 p.m. right here on BCTV Channel 8 uh, to check out also on their Facebook page, facebook.com slash Let's Talk VT. Robert, thanks for joining us. We're going to move on now. Uh, plenty of headlines this week, uh, including yet another pedestrian auto accident. Now, albeit one that uh, this time was not fatal though it saw one area resident airlifted to Dartmouth Medical Center before being brought uh, back to a stable condition in their ICU. The accident, which backed up traffic along Brattleboro's already congested Exit 2 uh, area for hours this week, did make the reformer's official tout.com video news feed, and that's where we're going to start with the coverage of it. Traffic is backed up on the I-91 South Exit 2 following a serious crash at Vermont Country Deli. For more videos like that one uploaded by Reformer reporters on the go as they report from the field, head to tout.com slash Reformer. You can see those little clips. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to take you down to the River Garden as uh, uh, Strolling of the Heifers Executive Director Orly Munzing has just begun her uh, introductory comments at their uh, press conference as uh, the stroll gets ready to officially take the reins on the River Garden downtown structure from building a better Brattleboro. Uh, let's take a look. BABB and Strolling of the Heifers are going to continue working together. We're not separating. And that's part of the agreement. Um, and I think it's also a reason why we were chosen to be the next stewards. Um, so we're going to be, because we're all working for Brattleboro. And uh, there's a very close connection between Strolling of the Heifers and BABB. And we're going to do um, many things uh, that will help each organization. Catch that full press conference from Orly and the rest of the Strolling of the Heifers team, along with representatives from BABB and members of the press, including Randy Holhut, Deputy News Editor of the Commons, who had some questions about how this uh, upgrade for the Strolling of the Heifers is going to be financed. That'll uh, all be up on BCTV's Facebook page, facebook.com slash bctv.brattlebro. And it'll also provide me with my segue as we talk about Randy and the good work being done at the Commons into our latest feature here on 545 Live, our Commons News Report, as we take a look at what Brattlebro's weekly independent newspaper uh, has out now. They go up uh, each Wednesday. Articles hit newsstands, and you can find more at commonsnews.org as well, including a follow-up story uh, submitted to the Commons uh, in conjunction with VermontDigger.org from Ann Galloway about uh, the uh, federal regulators who finished their three-day survey at the Brattleboro Retreat to find out if they're in compliance with federal guidelines. Now, this uh, could have jeopardized about 30% uh, of the patients at the retreat who received federal subsidies if compliance was not met. However, uh, the retreat was found to be in compliance. For more on those details, uh, take a look at the uh, Commons article on it, commonsnews.org, uh, and we'll get all the details there. In the meantime, we'll move on now in our stories here. And for that, I want to move into what we've dubbed just for this here episode as the demolition desk. Plenty of construction projects going on in Brattleboro that seem to involve knocking things down before they can rebuild, including the Hinsdale Greyhound Park uh, across from the recently relocated Walmart Superstore in Hinsdale, New Hampshire. That's where 545 Live content specialist Russ Grabiak headed out to uh, get footage. That's what we're looking at here. And we'll move on as well as last week, uh, official uh, shutdown construction began on the I-91 bridge that spans the West River between exits uh, two and three in Brattleboro. They're gonna be uh, bringing it down to one lane for a while. Uh, project slated to end in 2016. And there's some new uh, beams up in uh, Harmony parking lot over top of the uh, lower one floor section of the Brooks house as renovations continue there. Some exciting footage. We, uh, Caught a look at some of the workers up on the scaffolding working on the cupola. That was the only access to the tower. So when Kipling came and, and, and allegedly played poker up there, they would come out of the penthouse door, French door here, walk across the roof, go in that little door to go up to the top. So what you're seeing is the roof of the second story. This is just about all the steel. They've just finished erecting it. Now they'll start to plumb it up and straighten it and bolt it up, and then they'll put a deck on, you'll see. So that's some of the footage we're taking a look at there as well. We'll continue to keep you updated on the bevy of construction projects happening around the area and how it'll impact your daily life. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll move on here. This coming Thursday will mark 50 years since President John F. Kennedy was shot and killed as his presidential motorcade traveled through Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas, setting uh, into motion 50 years of controversy, conspiracy, and cover-up. 
something that's had the attention of local social studies teacher Bill Holiday for every one of those 50 years. Though these days, Holiday is one of the foremost historians in the assassination, spending the better part of a quarter century amassing first-hand testimony in the form of interviews with eyewitnesses, autopsy doctors, Warren Commission members, Texas police and corrections officers, and countless others. And Bill will be back in Dealey Plaza this coming week for the 50th anniversary commemoration ceremony. He's going to be broadcasting uh, from the hotel in Dealey Plaza uh, over a Google Hangout. And we're going to attempt to get some footage of that from him as well. In the meantime, uh, this past week, he sat down with Wyndham District 4 rep Mike Merwicki for a special edition of Montpelier Connection to talk about his uh, work in uh, the field, also uh, his class that he teaches at the high school around the assassination, and his plans uh, for his coming trip to Texas. We'll uh, get you a clip right now of that interview to start. Abraham DePruder uh, worked at the Dow Tex building, which is across Houston Street from where Oswald worked. And he ended up uh, perching himself on a pergola, they call it, and filmed the assassination of President Kennedy. UHS social studies teacher Bill Holliday, who's heading to Texas this week for the 50th anniversary uh, commemoration ceremonies in Dealey Plaza for the assassination of John F. Kennedy. We'll get more details from that, including one uh, can hope video from his Google Hangout uh, that he'll be broadcasting on Thursday. All right, uh, we'll move on in the stories now and get into some of our municipal report, Channel 10 report, courtesy of our hardworking field producer, Rich Melanson, who heads out to gather footage from the select board meanings of every one of the surrounding towns that BCTV serves, including Vernon, Guilford, Demerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica, and start in Newfane. For that, back into the stories we go. For residents of Newfane, it may seem like many moons have passed since Tropical Storm Irene left some homes of town residents damaged beyond repair. But that's just how long it's taken FEMA to deem the town deserving of funds to funnel to those residents. And while that's still good news, even after two years of uncertainty, Newfane board member Chris Druk took the opportunity at the board's regularly scheduled meeting last week to warn residents that there were still further steps mandated by the notoriously capricious federal agency, including asbestos mitigation, before bids for demolition on the properties can go out. Just so that everybody knows, we're going to be setting out bids here for demolition of these properties very shortly, probably within several weeks. Moving on, it's hard to catch a global climate change debate these days that doesn't make mention of the children of tomorrow. With the details of the planet, younger generations are on pace to inherit a topic of much debate. But what do the youth of the nation in question have to say about global climate change themselves? That was the question behind this week's open forum at the River Garden on Tuesday, which saw area energy experts join students from Hilltop Montessori School for an informal debate. Something ever-present BCTV volunteer extraordinaire Maria Dominguez was on hand to capture. These are issues that you need to be aware of and to be acting on. And again, thank you so much for mentioning 350.org because that is the activist group uh, for, I think, people to really uh, perhaps get involved with. Again, thanks to hardworking BCTV volunteer Maria Dominguez for capturing that footage. Next up, the Southern Vermont region has seen a rise in the ranks of modest celebs making the move to the lush hills of the Green Mountain State. But with Wyndham County leading the nation in nonprofits per capita, the area's finite supply of noteworthy names are finding that keeping up with the charitable needs of the region's plethora of laudable causes is more than any one schedule can accommodate. That's the idea behind a new nonprofit fundraising super troop dubbed The Hatch. Formed last year by a group of area residents with ties to the entertainment industry looking to pool their fundraising efforts into a yearly all out performance fundraising showdown. And it was one such fundraiser that packed the latches last night. The organization is called The Hatch, and uh, we pick a uh, beneficiary, if you will. And the beneficiary of this one is going to be New England Youth Theater, which is a great arts institution in, in Brattleboro. It serves a wide um, uh, swath of the community. Our latest feature, the video calendar, which is an interactive look at uh, the week's upcoming events hosted by yours truly. As I get to stand up in front of BCTV's massive video wall and uh, look at a series of events in the form of clickable links, something we'll take you to for a moment now to look at what's going on this weekend. BCTV's Roland Boyden here back for another edition of our weekly video calendar taking an interactive look at uh, the week's events. It's sponsored by the Brattleboro Savings and Loan. We'll start by taking a look in this early block here with the uh, 
Women's Freedom Center. It's their annual craft fair as women from all around the area get to showcase their artisan skills. It'll be going on from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Brattleboro Union High School. All right, that does it here. Thanks for watching all the way through this jam-packed 15 minutes. Be sure to join us next week where we'll check in with Bill Holiday as he uh, reports from Dealey Plaza on the 50th uh, anniversary of the JFK assassination. In the meantime, thanks for watching.